I thought we could talk about Joe Biden's dogs. Uh, Joe Biden, for those who might not know, uh, is the new president of the United States, and he owns two dogs, two German shepherds. And the American public was thrilled when he became president and moved his dogs into the White House. They actually performed an inauguration ceremony. This is a real thing. That is how wacky the United States is. Uh, these dog worshippers are really something else. To host a ceremony for a predatory carnivore that eats shit and has no idea what is going on. Uh, and wasn't even present at its ceremony. Major, that's the dog. The first rescue dog to live at the White House, by the way. Oh, God, I hate those two words together. Rescue dog. Oh. Major, the dog, didn't attend the dog inauguration because he and Champ, that's the other German Shepherd, are, quote, hard at work in preparation for their big move this week, said NBC Today show's Jill Martin. Hard at work? Doing what? What were they doing? Packing boxes? Loading up the moving van? Were they contacting, you know, their phone and, 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 and fucking internet companies to, to provide them with their change of address? Well, hard at work doing what? I'll tell you what they were hard at work doing. They were hard at work licking their balls. Anyway, uh, I, so Joe Biden adopted... I did it. I said that word, adopted. It's a word. See, this is so ingrained in me, and I'm trying to get out of this habit of saying adopted when I'm referring to a dog or a cat or any animal. The word adopt is a word reserved for human children. Anyways, he purchased a dog from a shelter back in 2018, and I'm convinced this was just part of his, uh, you know, his campaign, you know, he's trying to look good in the eyes of the American public that worships dogs. So he went and purchased a dog from a shelter. You know, he got a rescue dog. Ah, let's vote for him because he has a rescue dog. See my video called Dog Worshippers Use Virtue Signaling to Gain Status. That is exactly what Joe Biden was doing back in 2018 when he purchased this shit eater. When he purchased the dog at the shelter, he stayed, quote, telling stories and taking selfies with staffers for over an hour. All part of that image, trying to look good because he wants people's votes. He knows that people will eat up this shit. So anyway, uh, the dog... Um, bit someone earlier this month, uh, had what they call uh, a biting incident, bit someone who works in security, uh, and uh, we were told that the exact condition of the victim was unknown, the victim wasn't named, it was never explained exactly what happened. We were given very little information about the victim, but a whole lot of information about the dogs. The dog that bit this person, who, as far as we know, could have been minding his or her own business, possibly did absolutely nothing to provoke this animal. We don't know the details. Why don't they give us the details? Do you have more details than I have? Please share them in the comments. I was unable to find any details about this incident. The dog that bit this person was three years old, was the younger of the two dogs and had been known to display agitated behavior on multiple occasions, including jumping, barking, and charging at staff and security. You know, that they were explaining, when I read this article about how the dog, uh, both dogs were moved out of the White House after this. They were both expelled and sent back to Delaware. And I thought, good. They went on about how the dogs were stressed. They were trying to adjust to their new home. And this was very stressful because the dog had to take the elevator and it had people watching it when it was outside on the lawn. Oh, big stress. And, and, and the feeling I got was that, oh, we should have empathy for these dogs uh, because they were so stressed out. You know, if a human being had lashed out and injured someone because they were stressed out, we would have no tolerance for that. That excuse would not fly. 
oh, yeah, he punched someone in the face because, uh, you know, he, when he was out on the lawn, uh, you know, the paparazzi were looking at him. Well, yeah, he lashed out and stabbed a security agent with a fork, but, you know, he, he had just moved into this new house that was so different, and, and, and the move really stressed him out. We would never accept that as an excuse if we were talking about a human. Dog worshippers will say, but dogs aren't human. You can't expect them to have the same reactions as humans. You can't expect them to reason and, and to think and to control their behaviors the way humans can. Exactly. And that is precisely why these animals have no place in human society. But I read, you know, a couple of articles about this and that was the implication like, oh, they were making excuses for the dog. Uh, and we should, you know, feel sorry for the dog. Never mind feeling sorry for the security agent that was viciously bitten. They were appealing to us to have compassion for the dogs, not the human, only the dogs. Well, I came across this article yesterday and I thought I would talk about it. It was written by an absolute dog nut. And it's the same old mantras. The dog is the victim in every bite incident. The dog is never to blame. In the minds of these dog worshippers, the dog is always, always the victim. Uh, the dog is the victim. Every dog that bites has to be forgiven. Humans are always to blame for dog bite incidents. Every human has to be trained from early childhood to respect dogs above humans. Every child has to be trained to a very high standard to avoid frightening or upsetting dogs. This kind of stuff makes me sick. And this kind of stuff also makes me more and more convinced that the most likely way we're going to start managing and eradicating the dog menace is through animal welfare means. Persuading people that imprisoning dogs is cruel. This crazy woman is open about how dangerous dogs are. She tells us that dogs are estimated to bite more than four and a half million people every year in the United States. She adds many dog bites and unruly canine behaviors can be prevented and corrected with proper training and early intervention. Key word here, many. Many dog bites, not all. In Many reports of dog attacks, the dog that attacked was the quote-unquote best dog for many, many years, eight years, ten years, never showed any signs of aggression. In fact, I would say that this is the rule rather than the exception. It would seem that most dogs that rip people's throats out, out of the blue, unprovoked, most dogs that bite we're socialized, we're well-trained. This excuse doesn't fly. She is lying to us. Dog worshippers are deceptive and manipulative. And that's what this article is. She's very open about how dangerous dogs are, but she flips the responsibility onto intolerant humans. <laughs> People like her will never see the light, and they will prevent others from recognizing that keeping dangerous animals in human society is unacceptable, no matter how well-trained dogs are. She writes, dogs don't bite or act up out of the blue. This is a lie. Bully breeds were selectively bred to show no warning signs prior to attacking. That's what they were bred for. You know, and she lists a bunch of reasons why dogs bite. Dogs bite when they are afraid, when they feel threatened, when they get excited, are at play, when they've been trained to be aggressive, when they are being protective with food or treats, when they are in pain or annoyed. Could you imagine a human being becoming violent and then using one of these as an excuse? Oh, yeah, I was in pain. So, you know, I stabbed him. 
Yeah, I broke a bottle and I slashed him with the sharp glass. But come on, we were playing Monopoly. I got excited. Oh, I was annoyed. So I slapped her. Oh, I, uh, you know, she walked a little too close to my food while I was eating. So I punched her in the nose. You know, <laughs> we live in a civilized society or we're supposed to be living in a civilized society. This behavior is uncivilized. So like I said, dogs have no place in our society. She does not mention predatory aggression. All dogs are predators that retain the instincts of their wild ancestors to hunt, to take down and kill prey. And because dogs are instinct-driven with brains the size of lemons, they cannot tell the difference between a prey animal and a human being, especially a weak, vulnerable-looking human being like a child or an elderly person. These are dogs' preferred targets. All dogs are remorseless. That means they don't have the ability to feel empathy or guilt. All dogs are remorseless, bloodthirsty, and unpredictable. I sometimes think dog worshippers don't understand the meaning of the word unpredictable. They always argue with me and tell me, not all dogs are bad, not all dogs will attack. That's true. But you never know which ones will. There's a myth of the cynocephali, dog-headed people who are dangerous, who bark, and are cannibalistic monsters. I forgot to include this when I wrote about how dogs were perceived in the past in my video called Man's Best Friend, History or Mystery. This woman who wrote the article about how sending Biden's dogs back to Delaware is a bunch of malarkey is like a modern-day cynocephalic, an enemy of the human race. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please share my videos far and wide. We need to speak up and tell the truth about dogs and their owners. The future is dog-free.